Hello, YouTube. I really do. You're never there. And that could be my theme song for some of these days. So it's Friday, November 24th. 2023 Black Friday. Not that I participated in any of that retail bullshit, but it is Black Friday. 5:54 p.m. and I am on my way to my first shift through work while at Factor. Hopefully doing the same job that I did last Saturday through Winola. Now I don't know that for sure. I've been getting some mixed conflicting signals, which is a little frustrating, to put it mildly. When I accepted the shifts, and that was on, gosh, I think Tuesday? Might have even been Monday. It was a while back that I accepted the shifts. And as I mentioned in my vlog earlier, it was a little surprising to see them popping up on... Actually, it was Tuesday. It was the day that Steve was barfing nonstop. Because after his barfing incident, I wasn't looking at my phone much. I was just keeping my phone in my pocket. And when I went out to get some food, I checked on my lunch break. I checked, saw a text message from work while, and then saw that those, those shifts were being offered for Friday and Saturday on work while as opposed to coming through on Winolo. And predictably since then Winolo's been pretty dead. I checked traffic by the way on uh, Obama Phone 3 before heading out and we have two people waiting there to make a U-turn at the no U-turn sign. Only one here where it says U-turn okay, so I'm coming up here. Go do, go do, go do. Oh, and the guys at the no U-turn sign still got her turned around. Well, the one in front got turned around before I did. The one that was ahead of me, but behind that guy, was did the U-turn behind me. It always amuses me to see how that timing works out. And admittedly, I make U-turns there sometimes where it says no U-turn. The sign's pretty clear, no U-turn. My personal rule on that is I will do it if I can do it without coming to a stop and there's no oncoming traffic. If there's a gap and I can just do it in one fluid motion, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on. But I, I never stop and wait for a break in traffic there to make a U-turn. And I sure as hell don't sit behind two trucks to make a U-turn. By doing the right thing, got me ahead of the truck that was behind me, and uh, that's that's a win in my book. So, both shifts that I took for tonight, one for tomorrow, were very clearly described in the Work While app as fulfillment. There are three basic areas that they have temp workers working inside Factor. There's the first area that I work, which is called sanitation, which was the being in the super wet, nasty, scrubbing dishes and spraying dishes and just getting wet, emptying garbage cans, scrubbing floors, that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, it's work. If I absolutely need the money, and I'll do it. But at this point, I don't feel like I absolutely need the money. I've got enough money in my bank accounts right now to get me to next month. And while it would be nice to get ahead, it would be nice to make some headway on my debt, um, I don't really own the right kind of footwear and stuff to do that job. And I found that job extremely miserable. I did like the people I worked with, but... Yeah, not, not my idea of a good guy. The main thing is to do that job without absolutely destroying the shoes that I have. I would need the lodgings. I don't have 
have washes on having money for clothes. And if I enjoyed doing that job, and I thought I'd be doing that job on a regular basis, sure, I'd buy a pair. But no, I'm just trying not to not to sign up for that job. If the job was put out on the app as sanitation, I would not have taken it. The other two areas are food production. Uh, food production kind of self-fixed by the rates of producing food. And fulfillment. Now, the last shift I worked was in fulfillment. That's basically taking all the packaged meals. They're basically glorified TV dinners, but they're fresh, never frozen. They are fast chill, which to me is almost on a par with freezing. This job reminded me a lot of when I worked at the county food factory when I was a trustee in Tent City. And there was an area called Cook Chill. It was one of the many assignments within the food factory where they took the food that was prepared, which was essentially slop, and they just fast chilled it. Didn't freeze it, but they fast chilled it to an almost frozen temperature. And then they were kept stored like that until they were reheated, some kind of special device at the jams. Anyway, I've seen the, the area that's the, the fast chilling area and it, it definitely brought me flashbacks of Cook Chill from being in jail and being at the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office food factory. I don't know that anybody works in that area. I mean, obviously somebody works in that area, but I, I haven't seen it. haven't seen it. Uh, I'm almost thinking maybe the stuff that goes into that area goes via conveyor belts or something. I really don't know. I've just passed through that room. But food production is in areas uh, cutting, prepping vegetables, preparing, preparing food. Kind of trying to avoid that as well, but uh, I'm not trying to avoid that as much as I'm trying to avoid sanitation, which is just washing dishes and just wet, nasty, dirty work. The area that I worked in last time, though, I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was called fulfillment, and that's taking the already packaged meals and putting them into the food boxes, which are very similar to HelloFresh food boxes, which are mailed off, shipped off, however, you know, however they go. They all go into trucks and with various shipping partners. There. Right, nice turn in there, town car. Basically the two hi guys at Eric. Basically the two um, tasks that I did there was being in a line, filling food boxes. I liked that because there was really no learning curve for me in that. It was just identical to most of what I did when I worked at HelloFresh. Building the every plate boxes, the grocery boxes, and, and the regular HelloFresh meal boxes. The other task that I did was, and according to one of the guys I worked with, it was a new thing that they just recently started using, the giant um, pallet containers with hundreds of meals in them. Um, but it was taking those, those meals and then filling the little folding cases that go into the line through the assembly food boxes, which hold 12 meals each. It's taking them out with little things, making stacks of seven of those, putting them on little green racks and rolling them where they're being sorted out. Pretty repetitive, mundane job, but I really enjoyed that. It was low impact, I was able to do that very fast and efficient. And uh, yeah, I like that. But I like both of those tasks. Well, the job as described in the app, the shift that I took tonight, and shift I'm taking for tomorrow night is that. It specifically says fulfillment associate and it describes the environment and the work that you would be doing in that department. And as I mentioned, I had difficulty because of the issue with my iPhone screen accepting the job because work while makes me click this checklist and put check boxes down all this shit of things that are and aren't allowed and expected to make sure that you've read it and you understand it, which doesn't actually make sure that you've read and understand it, it just makes sure that you have a good enough screen and can tick boxes, which of course I, I didn't, I ended up having to install the app on Obama Phone 5 and, and do it on that phone. I managed to accept my, my first shift on it, and then for some reason I just couldn't manage to get through the screen with the ticking of the boxes, and some of the boxes were put in spots where just my iPhone screen has a dead spot. I can't tick that spot. I can't click that spot in the box. I couldn't find any way to scroll the spot to another place to take it. So I accepted.
accept that. I didn't accept any conditions regarding work environment or work reform of what would be done by sanitation. Well, today, I got a text message from Workwhile. I get text messages and then push through messages from Anna. I get a text message from Workwhile telling me that I might be working in that area and that I need to be prepared for that as well. Yeah, I'm not buying galoshes. I'm not doing that. And I'm not playing this bait and switch game. Oh yeah, Priscilla did that to me again last night. Did the, did the bait and switch. Making it sound like, you know, I was going to her place. Hot sex going on and switch it up. Oh, I just want you to hold me. Yeah, I can't sleep like that. No, I'm just gonna be laying away, horny next to your body while you tell me not to touch you. I've told you before. No, just no to that. No, I don't get dressed going home. That's all I gotta say about that. I just you know, sick of that crap. Well, I guess I got a little bit more to say. She did text me at some point this afternoon asking, saying that she got off work and I think four and asking if I was coming over to her place. Yeah, I didn't even respond to that. Now, you, you bait and switched me yesterday. I'm, I'm, I'm not falling for your bait and switch today. No. Not, not happening. So, well, way less traffic than I anticipated. I'm probably going to be in there super early. So, yeah, it kind of feels like like work while is trying to do a bait and switch thing. Now, to be fair, I don't think work while is doing it intentionally. I think that might have come down from Factor. That Factor sent one job description and they recruited a certain amount of people through the app and work while did. And then Factor contacted them later and say, oh, by the way, we need people for this position as well. And rather than putting it through the app as a different job and getting people willing to do that job, because I'm, I'm not, they just sent a text message saying, oh, by the way, even though you never agreed that you would do this, you didn't sign up to do this, you might be doing this. Yeah. I'm eager to see how that shit plays out. Yeah, I, I do feel like I'm probably going to be in fulfillment regardless. I also got some kind of a text message. I believe it was sent through the Workwhile app, but it was a text message from a person who identified themselves with a name. And I don't know anybody's names down there, so I can't. I don't know if it's somebody I know or not, but saying that they were the department head for fulfillment, very specifically said fulfillment, reminding what was needed to be dressed for fulfillment, and asking that I meet with her in the break or him in the break room when I when I came in and some other stuff. But it was very specific. So the fact that I've already worked in fulfillment. And there's likely going to be a whole lot of people that have never been in the fact building today because it's switched to a different app. I think it has me a shoe for fulfillment, but it's still something I'm not happy about. That they did as a bait and switch. Another thing that popped up was a thing saying that I need to have uh, motion tracking enabled in the app. Now, I bounce back and forth that app between, well, I should say Winola. I hardly ever use Workwhile, but I bounce back and forth between all my devices because I really can't count on any one of them have data or a, a connection or a battery that makes it through the shift. So I'm not sure how, how that tracking is going to work with me being logged in on more than one device and whatnot. But I sure had a hell of a time getting Obama Phone 5 to enable the tracking. Like the app was popped up, popped up a dialogue and hit that dialogue and it didn't change the setting and I couldn't get past that dialogue in the app. And, um, I did have enough time to go through my settings and, and manually do that. But yeah, the way the app was trying to direct the setting to open up absolutely didn't work. And my guess is that's probably a difference between Android, which I'm sure the app was designed for, and Android Go, which is what Obama Phone 5 is running. They're not exactly the same operating system. So there are modules within Android that some apps make use of that don't exist within Android. I still never got confirmation of it, but I'm reasonably sure that's why I was never able to call customers using the Domino's delivery experience app during the short time I was delivering through Domino's and why I would just make my phone freeze up when I would try to hit the button to connect to the customers. And I feel like at least one time when I first started trying to use that app on my iPhone, before I just started having so many problems with it, making it work on my iPhone because of how messed up the screen is on my iPhone, that it did work on my iPhone. But again, completely different operating system. And, you know, with an iPhone, I mean, things are either designed for 
never did find a Obama phone before. Have I seen a Obama phone 5? That's what I'm talking about. That's a new Max. I know sometimes when I meet Obama phone 5, I say Obama phone 4. Obama phone 4 was a... Was a... settings and the menu, I will probably go that route, and then, uh, I don't know what I'll do with it, why it's the thing's a complete piece of shit, it's not quite as bad as Obama Phone 5, but it's notably worse than Obama Phone 3, as I've said before, Obama Phone 3, it's a T-Mobile Revel 4, and it's not a bad device for what it is, what it is being a free government phone, it does run a full version of Android, I'm not sure what version of Android is running on it. I was kind of shocked at whoever had that Obama phone that I found in the car. That it wasn't password protected in any way at all. I just powered it up and boom, I'm writing somebody's personal stuff. It amazes me there's still people who leave their phones like that. Because I've seen naked pictures of this person. 
and their significant other. I don't know, I don't think that's something that I would want readily accessible on a device should I misplace it. So I get a text message from Rob, the manager at MLS, at about three o'clock, asking me to help out with, uh, I think, regular dirties or regular updowns or something of that nature. I have my team do that or whatever. And I texted him back, I'm like, yeah, I, I don't work on Friday or Saturday. He's like, oh, well, can you, can you send me Steve's number? I don't think Steve's working today either. Steve, I think, works Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. But I just texted him back and said I didn't have Steve's number because I don't have Steve's number. That was weird, and it, it amazes me that Rob isn't more cognizant of what my work schedule is. And, you know, no wonder when I was asking to be approved for overtime, he merely shut it down without really discussing it with me. I haven't talked to any Hertz management. Like, well, the only Hertz management I think that would actually ask for that from, from a top-down direction would be Barry. And, yeah, I haven't seen Barry much this week. It's Thanksgiving week, so it's not a normal week. No shock there. I uh, cannot believe how early I am here. If I'd have known I was going to be able to do this drive so quick, I'd have chilled at home a while longer. I made much better use of that time. Uh, this is the Circle K I usually go to before work. Hoping it's open. There was one time I came in here. And the place was uh, was closed. There was a sign saying it was closed at a certain time. That time was after I went to work. I don't see that sign. That's a good sign. Oh, anyway, I'm gonna head into head into Circle K. I don't know if I had anything else to say really. Pretty much gave you a summary of what's going on with Priscilla. I know that ended disappointingly last night. Um, as I was in the process of leaving, she did make a comment about how she was wanting to have sex with me in the morning or something like that. Her reason for not wanting to have sex was that she was tired. Now, I don't know what she was doing for two hours between the time that I got there and went to her bed in the time that she came in, slid up next to me naked and woke me up. Of course, you wake me up like that, I'm, I'm ready to go. That's how that works. And uh, and I need you to be too. And then she's like, well, I didn't want you being upset because I slept in the other room and you being upset because I'm not sleeping with you. And I'm like, well, yeah, you're right. That would make me upset, but I mean, this makes me upset too. Well, are you saying just because you want to have sex if I don't want to, that I have to? Well, you know what? I have to feed my cats every day. I don't want to feed my cats every day, but it's something that they need, and so I do it. I kind of look at it like that. And so I pretty much told her, you know, yeah. And um, she um, said she was wanting to have sex with me in the morning. That's like rolling the dice on that. It's very rare that that ever happens anymore. So her saying that she's wanting to do it, yeah, uh, I don't I don't believe you. What I do believe is that if I stayed there, I would go the whole night without being able to sleep because her naked body next to me and the, my reaction to that would keep me up all night. And I had to work tonight. So I didn't need to be up all night last night not sleeping. So I went home and got a good night's sleep. After uh, messaging a friend of mine that I, for a while, I had quite a crush on, and he seemed interested in getting together with me, uh, and, and that never happened, but we do still message each other from time to time. And, and so I, I, Priscilla told me to text her when I got home. So I had to text, text her when I got home. So I did. She didn't say what to text her when I got home. So when I got home, I went back through my uh, images and notes and whatnot and determined that it had been 47 days since she had last given me a low job. And so I just texted her and told her that 47 days was entirely too long to wait for another blow job. She said to text her when I got home. That's what I texted her when I got home. 
And I got home and I checked and I just had a message from that other woman whom I hadn't heard from in quite some time. So I, I asked her, you know, how long, how long should a guy in a relationship have to wait between blowjobs? And her response was, should be getting BJ's more than pussy if he's a normal man and good women don't normally make their men wait. I like that answer. I said, okay, wanted to make sure I wasn't being unreasonable for being upset over 47 days. And her response to that was, oh man, uh, as long as he trims the bush, it's an anytime reasonable request. That's coming from a woman. So... It's enough for me to feel like Priscilla's being the unreasonable one. Regardless, I'm not happy and I wasn't sticking around for her naked body laying back next to me and her only response being, don't touch me while she's trying to touch and caress me. I, I, no, I'm, I'm not I, I'm not down for that kind of torture. Anyway, I need to get some, uh, I want to get some munchies. Last time I went to Factor, they didn't have any Factor meals, so I gotta make sure that I've at least got food on hand so I don't pay overpriced uh, vending prices for food. I know I do have two Mountain Dews in my thing, and well, look at that. There's the two for two inner circle reward for the Mountain Dew sign right in front of me. When I went by the Mountain Dew, or went by the Circle K over it, the one that's closest to my main job at the rental car center at 7th Street and Buckeye, they did not have that deal going on. So, I want to stock up on a few of those just for GP and um, yeah, get some food here. Anyway, thanks for coming along on the drive.